we seek to ensure that all people are born healthy and that they live optimal lives, that they remain healthy. We study how blood vessels form, what makes them develop. So understanding better how the brainstem normally contributes to, to behavior will allow us to ask questions about where to look. The biggest advance over the last decade is not only in what we know about the genomes of the different organisms, but the ways in which we can manipulate those genomes. Zebrafish have a real advantage compared to humans or mice or many mammals in that development happens so quickly. Development that in human might take weeks or even months to occur occurs in a zebrafish over just a couple of days. So everything is speeded up and we can watch things in real time much more easily. And the wonderful thing about fish is, in terms of studying development is that, of course, fish deposit their eggs in the water. And therefore, when the eggs are fertilized, embryonic and fetal development occurs not inside the mother where it's hard to see. You can see every organ. You can see the entire brain, the guts, anything that you can imagine. Uh, you can just simply look through a microscope and see all of this really exquisite detail. And being able to do that means that you can very easily just take a fish or, or hundreds of fish or thousands of fish and uh, look through them and try to find the ones that have the particular sort of defect you're looking for. And by uncovering these same defects in fish, we can then do experimental studies on them, which are not possible to do in humans. Uh, similarly, you can also do large-scale chemical screenings. And this is a, a way to basically uncover small molecules or compounds, essentially possible future drugs, that can uh, be used to uh, have particular beneficial effects, such as stopping blood vessels from growing or promoting blood vessel growth. And so in newborn humans, it's really all about the brainstem with these kind of hardwired mechanisms for allowing babies to control their behavior, their simple behaviors, in, in the appropriate fashion. So the same is true in zebrafish. Zebrafish have a very sophisticated brainstem, and so we can use the zebrafish to explore what kinds of behaviors can be controlled by the brainstem. And this is a sort of project with a big upfront investment in making all of these fish, but I, I think in, once, once we have the fish, it goes pretty quickly, I think. So I hope in a year we'll, we'll really be able to demonstrate that using this fish can give us very uh, unique insights into the way that the brain controls behavior. So we have an effort here at NIH across the whole of the NIH to coordinate our funding efforts for research in this area, a trans-NIH zebrafish coordinating committee. There's been a very concerted effort over the last decade to develop these tools to further the research. And, and NIH across institutes has worked very strongly in this area to move it forward. Um, this community, the zebrafish research community, has perhaps been one of the better communities at interacting with NIH staff to, to help coordinate this effort. To answer the all questions that are the most challenging and the most important ones in science today requires a facility of this size with these many fish available to really excellent scientists. It's an incredible resource.